Welcome to our decision making video for Python. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be dealing with flowcharts and learning how to deal with flowcharts. What's really important is that we understand that this is a principle that adults use. This is a principle that um, companies require programmers to be able to use all the time so that the average person can understand what's going on. And in making a flowchart, it's very easy for us to be able to show what we're doing, but it also makes it all logical for us. So we're going to do some practice stuff here. Now, we can use um, flowcharts in uh, Word documents. So if you see here, we go to Word, and if we go to Insert over here, you go to Shapes. And down here in shapes is flowchart. And you'll see if you hover over each one of these things, they mean a particular thing. And we need to use what they mean. We need to get used to using the very things that they may mean. So for example, this is a process. See how it's flowchart process. This one here, as I hover, it's an alternate process. Uh, this one here is manual input. That means that the person or a person needs to put stuff in to a program. Um, this one here, down here, uh, means stored data. This one here means display something. Over here, this one process, um, alternate process, decision making, um, uh, data. Um, so we've got to use all these symbols. So get used to these symbols. And the way we do that is we literally grab one of these symbols and we draw it in. Um, and then we can actually edit that, edit the text, and we can write something in here. Okay? So this is the process for making a flowchart, and you're to use Word. Um, if you don't have Word at home, you could probably try Google Docs and you should be able to see the same thing. Um, if you don't, have Word or um, Google Docs or access to any of those kinds of things to actually show these. What you can do is you can go online and get the symbols and then you would need to physically show what they were. It's much easier to just write data in here, um, but you will need to do the same thing. So let's have a look at this decision making process. So, oops, sorry. So we've got this beautiful um, PowerPoint over here and we're going to go to our flowchart over here. So if I was going to be looking to input a name, input a score, and then get pass or fail according to um, that, um, this is the flowchart that it would be. I'd input a name, and you'll notice that symbol there, input a name, then we've got input a score, Right, so this is manual input, manual input. So it's that one, that square box that's kind of on an angle like that. And then we've got a decision to make, okay? And it's an if statement. And the if statement goes, well, if the score is above 50, then we pass, and if it's below 50, it's a fail. So if we see over here, this is the decision above 50, we print pass. If it's below 50, we print fail. So this is your flow chart, okay? Now, if I was to write in Python um, input name, what I would do is I would give it some kind of variable name. So for example, person equals input, manual input in this case, and open brackets, please enter your name, inverted commas, bracket and this is what that would look like when I program or run it. It says please enter your name. Of course I've entered my name Roland there. Uh, this next part input a score would be grade or score. You could call it score if you wished but it it's int okay input so open bracket input what grade did they get um, and the score at this point would be 40. Okay, so we're, we're saying 40, and that would, of course, be below 50. 
And of course, you would assume, therefore, that the school would end up being failing, wouldn't it? But I want you to take notice that um, anything that needs a number, a whole number, not 39.97, but a whole number, 40 or 39 or 38, we can use this int thing um, to tell us, tell the computer that the grade is actually a number, okay? And that they need to input that number and that's the question that they'll get. And this is the output of that, what grade did you get? 40, okay? Now to make a decision, we need an if statement. Now let's have a look at this if statement. If grade is less than 50, uh, inverted, um, sorry, semicolon, then we've got this space here um, and it automatically does that space. Um, and you'll see that this line just helps us understand that this is in line here and that this is moved over here. So print the person, which is over here, whatever they input, in this case it would be Roland, failed this subject. Else print person passed this subject. So if, if I got a score of above 50, then it would immediately pass this, it would bypass this. But if I got a score less than 50, it would actually go to this point. So that's the decision it's making, and it's going to print past the subject or fail the subject. So in this case, it's going to print fail the subject. Notice the something to notice with the input of a score, int, and then your whatever you've got in there, denotes the input will be an integer. To do a decimal point, the syntax would be float, and then that code goes there okay so if I was putting a score of 39.97 then we would use the word float rather than int at that point so then the code ends up looking like this this is exactly what the code looks like and this is what the input would look like please enter your name Roland what grade did you get 50 Roland passed this subject and this is the same code as that, but this time over here, I've got 49 here, and it outputs Roland failed the subject. So let's have a look at this code here. Roland equals input, please enter your name of the student, and the score equals int, input, what grade did you get? And then it has a series of things that will work out and so if it's above or equal to 90 it'll print A. If it's above or equal to 80 then it'll print B. If it's above 70, C, D, F, etc. I want you to notice um, a couple of things. Firstly that I've started with greater than 90. The com code actually reads this this way. It doesn't just read it all and then do it it reads it systematically okay so if the score was greater than 90 or equal to the 90 then it's to print an a so if the score was 89 it would immediately go to the next line else if it's greater or equal to 80 which it is then it would score b and then it, it else if it's 70 well it's not so it's going to ignore that 60 it's going to ignore that else that it's not it's going to print the 80, okay? So this is what it would look like if I got 50, F, okay? So in this case, it's greater or equal 60 to pass, otherwise it's F. So what does that code look like? What does that flow chart look like? It actually looks like this. Input your name, input the score, and then if it's greater than 90, print A, and it exits the sub, it exits that else statement because it already was there. Uh, else it goes down to 80, if, it, if it's there, then it will print B and then it'll exit the sub. I want you to notice that the process runs down until it finds the grade, then exits the sub. Notice that the program starts from the highest score and moves to the lowest score, right? This means it can sort it out nicely. If it didn't sort it out this way, but started at 70 here and then went to 90 here, 
if the score was above 70 at this point so if it was you know 80 or no 75 it would immediately print and um, if it was 70 here instead of 90 it would immediately print a C and then if it said after that it said instead of 70 it went to 80 it would completely ignore that because it's already exited the sub so what's really important is that you get the order right. You start with the highest one here, then keep going, then keep going, keep going, keep going. So we're going down in the score. Otherwise, the the score would probably get uh, C if if they you know. So you've got to be really careful with the order of everything. Creating a flow chart diagram helps us to see what is going on without coding okay you need to make a flowchart for every code that you begin to uh, so that you begin to understand the order of things to do okay so your task complete the following exercises by creating flowcharts for the codes shown they are easy and yet harder please pause the video for each slide until you have completed all the flowcharts so the first flowchart you've got to complete is this one. When you've completed this one, please complete this one. Pause the video now and complete the charts. The next video we're going to, or the next flowchart we're going to do is this flowchart. Please complete this flowchart, watching it very carefully, pause the video now. The next chart we're going to be doing is this one here. Please pause the video now and complete this flow chart. The next chart we're going to do is 3.25. Please pause the video now and complete this particular chart. That's the end of the task. See you later.